I'm Suze and I'm the Farm and Youth Employment Project Manager here at Arbuff Dub. Um, today I'm going to be talking to you all about kale and how to harvest it. The kale that we have here is the curly red variety. So in harvesting kale, you can either use a harvest knife, um, harvest scissors, or your hands. Today I'll be using a harvest knife. So what I like to do using my harvest knife, I get as close as I can to the main stem and I like to cut away from myself. And there you go, you have your kale. One thing you want to look out for on your kale are aphids and they're kind of really small insects that gather in little clusters and they're white. And if you see that on your kale, totally fine. All you'll have to do is um, wash your kale very thoroughly. And what I like to do is fully submerge my kale leaf in vinegar water and I'll dunk it several times until all the dirt and the insects are gone. Now that you have your kale pick, you can take it into the kitchen. Thanks, Suze. So how does kale benefit your health? Kale is part of the cancer-preventing and cancer-fighting cruciferous vegetable family, like broccoli, cauliflower, Brussels sprouts, collard greens, and bok choy. Not only do cruciferous vegetables help prevent cancer, but they also decrease inflammation in your body. Kale is considered diabetes-friendly, mostly due to its fiber content. Fiber slows the absorption of sugar in the bloodstream, preventing spikes and crashes. Kale is also a great source of many nutrients like vitamin K, which improves blood clotting and bone health. Vitamin A, which is important for vision, brain health, youthful looking skin, and keeping your immune system strong to fight off infections and illness. Vegetables have a lot of fiber in them, so add them in slowly, chew them thoroughly, and pair them with a lot of fluids to decrease any digestive discomfort. High amounts of vitamin K can decrease the effectiveness of blood thinners, such as warfarin and coumadin. So please check in with your doctor before adding large amounts of leafy green vegetables to your diet. Hi, my name is Melissa, and I am the owner of Musang in Beacon Hill. Today, I couldn't be more excited to be here with Tilth Alliance, sharing one of my favorite recipes growing up, um, but with a Pacific Northwest twist. Adobo, kung kung, is a Filipino vegetable dish uh, where we use uh, water spinach, also known as kung kung, a lot of garlic, soy, vinegar, um, but today, because it is the winter season, uh, we're gonna be substituting our water spinach with kale. We've got two different types of kale today. I've got curly kale, which has the nice purple stem, and lachinato kale. This one is gonna be a little bit more mild. Um, it's gonna cook down really well. And the curly one has a little bit more bitterness to it, um, which I think will be a nice balance in flavors. Adobo, what is adobo? It's usually a protein or a vegetable that's cooked in soy sauce, vinegar, a lot of garlic, uh, bay leaf, and black peppercorns. Today, instead of using soy sauce, we're actually gonna be using coconut aminos. We're using a cane vinegar. If you don't have cane vinegar, feel free to use rice wine vinegar. Um, it's a great substitute as well. You see that I have a plate full of mushrooms. They've got a great kind of just like meat substitute texture and flavor that's gonna add to this dish. We've got cremines, king oysters, oysters. And I think when we come together, you're gonna have a very delicious and health forward dish. Let's get started. There's a sauce portion and then actually putting the dish together. So I'm gonna get all of my ingredients chopped up um, and so that when we're ready to cook, we're just at the fire and everything goes super smoothly. So I've got garlic here, they're already peeled. Um, for me, the best way to mince garlic is actually to just mash using the back of your hand and the knife. It keeps your hands nice and clean. They don't get sticky from all of the garlic juice. I'm actually gonna save two of my cloves that are smashed I'm gonna set that aside for my adobo sauce. And then the other three cloves I'm gonna mince up nice and fine. If you don't know what mincing is, it means just a really small dice on your vegetable. Garlic is such a huge part of Philippine cuisine. Next up, we're gonna be taking our onion. For our recipe today, we're gonna use half of the onion for the adobo sauce, and then the other half for our actual adobo. So this half of the onion for the adobo sauce, I'm actually just gonna cut them in larger kind of chunks. I just quartered it. 
This will be easier and let out a lot of flavor when we're making our sauce. I just added that with our crushed garlic. And then this onion, we're actually gonna do a julienne, which is like very thin strips. So we have a lot more texture too when we are eating our kale. I've got that ready. So I'm gonna set these two aside and then let's get started with the kale. You can start from the end and just slowly pull off your leaves. So it comes off all in one and your leaves are intact. If that doesn't work for you, you can go ahead and take your knife, fold your kale in half and just run your knife along the rib of this leaf and you can have it that way. The curly kale. As you can see, there's little leaves coming off. It's not one big piece, but kind of same thing. Pull slowly and you get all your leaves off. All right, so all of my kale is cleaned. I have a huge bowl here. It might seem like a lot in the bowl, but when you cook it down, um, kale actually cooks down, wilts kind of like spinach and a lot of water content comes out. So clean a little bit more kale than you normally would. Uh, we're almost done. You see how quick this prep is. Um, we're actually just gonna clean our mushrooms. Um, I like to just kind of gently shred my oyster mushrooms. Um, these take up a lot of flavor. They've got a nice chew to it, a good texture. If you get them or you're out foraging, you can see that there's some dirt to it. The easiest way to clean them is to get a damp towel and just gently clean your mushroom this way. Don't put your mushrooms in water because they'll get waterlogged and then the flavor of the mushroom is going to be gone. Um, so with these, I'm just going to cut them in slices. And then these ones are super beautiful. You can use these as a garnish. They work really well, um, but we're actually just gonna cut these lengthwise. So that's it. We have our mushrooms, we have our kale, we have our garlic and our onion, and that's it, it's so simple. Before we get started on the fire, I'm just gonna pre-mix my sauce together. Coconut and minos. I'm gonna do half a cup of this. And then our cane vinegar, half a cup of cane vinegar to my mix. And then I'm actually gonna add some water. This is actually only gonna be a quarter cup. And that's that. We're ready to go to the fire. All right, so we've got everything mised out. I've got a small sauce pot here. Um, I'm gonna get it going on about medium high heat. Here I'm actually gonna lightly cook the onions and the garlic um, to really extract more flavor. So I'm just gonna toss my onion and my smashed garlic in here. And I'm gonna get a little bit of color. I'm gonna cook the onions till they're about a little translucent as well. Don't worry about the chunks of the onion. Uh, we're gonna strain this sauce after. I'm gonna add a tiny bit of salt. It's gonna help pull out moisture that's in there. You're gonna get a lot more flavor that way. And you can kinda see I'm getting a little, a little char, cooking it down, the onion's getting translucent. At this point, I'm gonna add my sauce. So this is the cane vinegar and the coconut aminos. And then I'm gonna add my bay leaves and my black peppercorn. The beauty of this sauce is that once you've strained it, you can just keep it, let it cool down, put it in a jar and keep it in your fridge. And you can use this sauce for chicken. You can use this sauce for pork. It holds really well and is really versatile. Always make sure you taste your food when you go. Mm. That's delicious. The flavor that I'm looking for is a balance between savory and umami and acidic. Now that our sauce has been reduced and it's in the corner, um, we can actually start our kale and mushroom. I've got some oil here going. It's nice and hot. I'm on a medium high heat. I'm actually gonna start with my garlic. Garlic is such an important part of this dish. But make sure you keep stirring so you don't burn your garlic. Once you start seeing golden brown on some of it, go ahead and add your onions. 
The moisture from the onions is actually gonna help slow down the cooking process of your garlic and so they won't burn. Garlic has a beautiful color. My onions are becoming translucent. I'm gonna uh, take this opportunity to put my mushrooms in. Add a little bit of salt. Add a tiny bit of pepper. So you can see that my mushrooms are starting to caramelize. There's a nice color on the bottom of my pan. I'm actually gonna deglaze my pan now with our sauce. So I've got a strainer here. You can also pre-strain your sauce. And now I'm gonna add our kale. You can see that I'm just kind of tearing the kale as I go. And the kale's gonna wilt. So you can start mixing it in with your mushrooms and your adobo sauce. And I'm gonna cover it with a lid. And I'm gonna let it steam and cook and wilt down. We'll give it a couple of turns. Um, I'd say between like five to eight minutes and then your kale will be ready. Our kale and mushroom is just finishing up. Um, I'm just gonna clean up a little bit because it's important to clean while you work. Um, I've got some scraps here. Um, I just wanna make sure that I compost them. You can reduce food waste by using all parts of the kale. Many people think of kale stems as trash or food scraps, but with a little creativity, you can use them in the kitchen to reduce food waste and maximize nutrition. Try blending kale stems in a smoothie, slice it up nice and thin and top it on a salad, throw it in some soup or pickle it in a brine for a tangy treat. If you have too much fresh kale and don't think you'll eat it in time, freeze it. Freezing kale locks in nutrients, so it'll be just as healthy as eating it fresh. Oh my gosh, thank you, Tanya, for reminding us that we can cook with scraps. Um, so I'm just gonna set it aside here for you to use later on. We're all clean, we're ready to go. We had a pot of rice cooking because this dish is a do not miss rice while eating this. I'm gonna get my kale and my mushrooms. They have cooked down. They are smelling delicious. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and get a plate. I'm gonna scoop up some rice. If you have fried garlic or fried shallots, that would be a nice kind of topping on this. So I'm gonna take my sauce. I'm just gonna put it over my greens and the rice. And there you have it. Adobo and kung kung, but with kale and mushrooms. Maraming salama to Tilt Alliance for having us here today. Um, thank you for letting me share one of my childhood recipes. Um, I hope you enjoy it, make it at home, share it with your friends and family. Um, thank you. Bye.